Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Animac here from Anime Uproar, and welcome to another episode of the One Piece Virgin Podcast. Marine Ford, bro. Th- I'm not ready for this. I am not ready for this discussion. And that is why we're postponing today's podcast to tomorrow at 4 p.m. Come back then, boys. It's over, yeah. guys. I can't. No, no. It's, <laughs> it's so crazy. It's so crazy, guys. I have goosebumps and other physical symptoms of greatness. And joining us today, along with penis Nuck greatness. Numbers, Nux and Briggs. Nux and Briggs. Nux, don't talk about penises when we're live. We also have a young man known as Mr. Morge. What's going on, everyone? Thanks for having me, guys. Hell yeah. Congrats on 50k subs on YouTube. Definitely check him out. He's a legend. Check out Mr. Morge on YouTube. It's M-O-R-J, not Morgs. Morge. (laughs) Right. Common mistake. People watch Mr. Morge's videos and he's like, wait a second. He doesn't talk like this. What's going on? <laughs> Very strange stuff. Mac Anywho. and Morge. Mac and Morge. Let's do this. Mac and Morge. Um, by the way, guys, if you do enjoy the podcast and you want to support it, share it. Share it with your friends. Share it online. Spam it on Reddit. Whatever you got to do. I'm not telling you to do it, but you could do it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and whenever you do that, tag Animac on Twitter at Anime Uproar. <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> Thank you, Nux. See, you're learning. Marine Ford, Marine Ford guys. Let's go. Bro, I, I, don't, I don't know where to start. Like, Okay, it starts off with Ace kneeling on a pedestal and Sengoku being like, Hello! Your father <laughs> was Pirate King Goldie Roger. Yes. So, f- so f- we start off with this reveal that... Th- I'm thinking this whole time, okay, so Ace and uh, Luffy are brothers. But we start off with this reveal that actually the Pirate King... Goldie Roger was Ace's real father, and him and Luffy are just like non-blood brothers who grew up grew up together. So I was like, "Whoa!" So Goldie Roger is his son, and then we get the whole no, Goldie Roger's the father. Keep the keep father, yeah, the yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm losing my mind, bro. I'm losing my mind. But no, so we get this whole backstory with how uh, Goldie Roger obviously was executed, and then his lover or wife was pregnant, and then she hid the baby. In she her womb for she extra give months. birth You're so for bad. 11 extra months, which is a thing that hap- can happen. Was yeah. it like and 20 she... months? And her name's Port yeah. Gas D. Rouge, by the way. Yeah, her name is Rouge. And she did this in order to protect her son because obviously everyone hated Goldie Roger in terms of the government. And any son or child of his would immediately be killed. So she hit him and lost her own life as a result, but managed to save him. And then he was taken in by Garp and raised along with Luffy to become a great Marine. And that's exactly what happened. Dude, how'd you feel when you got that reveal? Like, was it like a stand-up walk-around moment or what? Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? Like, at first I was like, wait, wait, they're brothers. It doesn't make sense. And then when it was revealed that they were all raised by Dadan, whoever that is, because we can't, we haven't seen it yet. I kept thinking that was Luffy's mom, but apparently not. Then I was like, bro, what's going on here? What is going on? So yeah, it was pretty crazy from the very get-go. And then... I, mean, I honestly, when we see the pirate fleet arrive at Marine Ford and Whitebeard and stuff, I honestly got goosebumps. Like, this was so epic. Such an epic entrance into this already tense situation. Yeah, it was, it was the was second best. and en- It was the third best entrance in the entire arc. <laughs> Dude, that's saying something. <laughs> you could make, like, a <laughs> top ten list just of entrances in Marine Ford. It was <laughs> nuts. Number ten, when Diamond Jozu popped out of, like, I don't know, out of some hole in the floor to attack <laughs> Aokiji. <laughs> no, yeah, it, it was so much greatness. And we had our boy Mihawk in here, too, who up until this point was the greatest entrance I've ever seen um, oh, back when yeah. he was first introduced. So there was everyone was here, man. Everyone was here. So many epic overpowered characters what a freaking war this was dude you know that smash meme like uh not meme it's like everyone is here it's like that everyone is here poster for like the new smash game and everything like that that's literally what marine ford was it was just like everyone is here yeah (laughs) straight up you know glorio you see like white beard (laughs) floating across the stream shatters the world then you have me and you have buggy coming across the stream (laughs) Dude, that's like one of the best video game theme songs ever. I swear. It really is. So I do think we uh, we skipped a part prior to, um, I guess, like we finding out the backstory about like Ace and Goldie Roger. I'm pretty sure, didn't Luffy have his moment with Whitebeard where he, like, he stands on the ship next to him? 
No, it's after. It's after? Really? Yeah. Because yeah, I mean, Luffy comes... Yeah, right. Luffy comes from a different angle. That angle being the sky! And then he sees the, the big gates like slowly opening with Buggy with his hands outstretched. And everyone's like, oh my god, Buggy's opening the gates! Right? <laughs> yeah. Yo, the Buggy <laughs> moments in this arc are so freaking good. Bro. <laughs> this is the arc where Buggy becomes a legend, right? Like, right? All the, all the things he accomplished is just insane. Dude, and he was fiddling with the Den Den Mushi thing the whole time to broadcast his great victory over Whitebeard. <laughs> <laughs> legend. Yeah, so the thing is, when Buggy was first introduced way back at, at the beginning, and everyone's like, bro, Buggy, he's the next Pirate King, he's a legend. I was like, what are you talking about? This guy's a clown. <laughs> yeah. And now I get it. Now I understand. Meanwhile, everyone finds but out that, that he, was on, arm, he was on the, the crew image. of the Pirate King. He ca talks casually with Shanks. He gets sliced up by Mihawk and is joking around like it's nothing. And everyone gets to see this happen. And like he's just a mean <laughs> character and he's goofy in every situation. So it's like, it, he could act this casually before one of the Yonko, one of the strongest swordsmen. And like their attacks do nothing. And literally, like, next Pirate King buggy, boys. No, but yeah. with the scene with his arms outstretched, holding his staff, like, which is just a <laughs> stick, and he's just like, and the gates are opening, and like all the prisoners around him, they're like kneeling and praying to him. They're like, you are a god, and then Luffy's, <laughs> Luffy joins in, and he's like, oh my god, Buggy, I didn't know you could do this. <laughs> no. Saying it's just a stick is such a weak mindset. Clearly. Enemies in the chat says, Buggy, the first streamer in One Piece. <laughs> no, no, no. Man, Look, my inspiration. I, I've been saying this for years. Buggy will be the Pirate King. I guarantee you. It, it, oh. It's on a meme level, but also I could genuinely see him become the Pirate King. And Mr. Morge would probably agree with me because he spits facts. I think if you look at Boa, uh, Boa and, Buck and Buggy, you can pretty much say that Odo predicted Twitch. I mean, it's, so. Would you look at that? Yo, Would Boa Hancock's the biggest simp in the series, and I still simper. And it's ironic. Oh, and because because simp. Everyone simps for her. Yeah, and she simps for Luffy pretty her. hard. Yeah. Yeah. She's like a tier three sub for Luffy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's hilarious though. It, it's so great. I love all the buggy moments and you know. Anyway, yeah, the moment I wanted to talk about was just the, the white beard moment. I don't know if you want to take it away, uh at a Mac where Luffy meets Whitebeard for the first time. It's still later. Like first yeah, they yeah. fight oh, okay. for a bit, and then yeah, chill out, Briggs. I, I know you're. I know you're. I right. like that moment a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want to. I want to talk about that moment. But again, the buggy thing. You know, we bring it up, but it is another key example of the one thing that we've been talking about all over, over and over again in this podcast, and that is that One Piece blends comedic moments and really emotional, serious moments in such a really cool way that it always keeps you interested and it doesn't like it's not jarring like you get the buggy moments and all these like horrible deaths and all these other things that are happening that you're like no way wow and yet it makes sense and it goes well together and it's a nice um balance yeah i mean buggy as comedic relief was like necessary that arc because you don't really have a lot of the usual so it's like you don't have the straw hats and stuff so you need the jokes to come from somewhere so like oda just really playing a buggy this entire arc was okay. just a really good idea and let's yeah, not you don't forget have, you don't have the you know, entire marine ford war is only possible thanks to mr two's bold sacrifice right yeah let's yeah, not yeah. forget let's not forget the real legend here but i think whitebeard's big entrance it, it was like a three-fold entrance first it's a whole fleet of ships coming from the distance and everyone's like, Nani, white beard, son. And he's just slowly rolling in. And then he shatters the planet. What? What? Major villains before turn into sand. And this man straight up caused a tsunami by flicking the air, bro. God damn it. Yeah, and they, and had... they say that this man and his fruit are strong enough to destroy the world if you want to. The world! And, and you then know, we had Kizaru freezing the, world, the, the waves, and it was it was just crazy shit. Ice yeah. time. So oh, the I entire think. like several first interactions of that fight were like nuts because it was like that. I mean, not to get ahead of you, but then like the Mihawk moment, like him attacking Jozu and or what, attacking Whitebeard, and then Jozu popping up, and then Marco and stuff. Yeah, Marco fighting Kizaru, and yeah, so we had a bunch of power reveals. We had. Um, Obviously, Whitebeard's Tremor, Tremor Fruit, but we also had Marco's... Tremor, Tremor Fruit? That's That was my translation. The, yeah, it's like the technical one, and it sounds so lame. It makes it sound so much more minor than what it actually is. Like, oh, it's a Tremor, Tremor Fruit. 
That's it's so okay. sad. Fine, it's the earthquake, earthquake fruit. Oh. Yeah, there we go. No. Uh, then we had Marco, who is Whitebeard's first division commander. He has a mythical zone fruit, which is apparently rarer than even a Logia, a phoenix fruit. I thought that was interesting. Is this the first mythical zone we've ever seen? Um, We've seen ancient zones, but I think this is the first mythical zone. Yeah, yeah. that's what I thought. Yeah, because the one dinosaur guy has like an ancient zone. Right. right? Yeah, dude, people love Marco because of the mythical zone. Like him being the first introduction of that, that was such a. And he also really he pulls off he pulls really pulls it off well. Like we yeah. saw Ki Kizaru, like he destroyed all of the supernovas in an instant. Yeah. And he's fighting head to head against Marco. And the way they fought, it's like, oh, you came close to defeating me, you liar. And then he like counter attacks, and he's like, whoo, you almost got me with that one, you liar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> iconic. Oh, the Phoenix that. fruit is really really cool. And then a, a Kainu. He has a lava logia yeah. or magma, whatever. Yeah. That's and that that it's stronger than fire. So that was a, a cool reveal as well. Although I fucking hate Akainu, but we'll talk about that later. Fuck yeah. <laughs> magma we, we breath. The whole hockey being effective against logia. That was a big thing I, I noticed yeah. in this fight. Yeah, there was a rereading it. Like um, I still at the first time I I experienced Marine for it. I. I didn't remember how many times Logias got sliced up. And that would never fly in modern day One Piece. Like, with hockey the way it is, it, they should be slicing each other's heads off. The heads should be gone, you know? You'd think that all these big time players had hockey. Yeah. 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 But that's all right. That's whatever. By the way, how'd you feel about the Whitebeard commanders like Marco, Jozu, and I guess Vista? Because, like, Vista, Izo, and let's not forget Squarda Dogo, whatever his name was. <laughs> Squard, the guy that betrayed him. Well, how yeah. dare you? Dude, but Squarda, like, how could you? to me, like, the commanders were, like, way stronger than I expected. Because I wasn't expecting, like, you know, Kizaru attacking and then, like, Marco was going to stop him. Or, like, Mihawk attacking and then, like, Jozu stops him. Like, that was, like, a big reveal oh. to me that, like, they were this strong. But it made sense. Because it's like, oh, well, yeah, they're Whitebeard's crew. They're it makes sense because like, I would, like... I'm not a big power scaling guy, but I would say that Whitebeard is like strong, like especially like obviously he's not in his prime, but especially yeah. when he was in his prime, is stronger than the admirals or a yeah. single yeah. admiral without a doubt. So the people that are the head of his command or the head are like um, first and second in command under him for a Yonko of his level need to be like close to admiral level. Yeah, yeah, I think that definitely Whitebeard would have crushed the admirals in his prime. And, and he was kind of crushing them, even not in his Yeah, mind. exactly. Yeah, legitimately. Exactly. I, we can't talk about it yet, but dude, there's... Oh, he, he slammed and, him. And, and that's the whole thing with Mihawk, because Mihawk, when he was first introduced, he was so OP, and then we saw his attack actually get blocked. But I will say, bro, I know how Zoro can become the greatest swordsman. He needs to grow a mustache. This is true. All the greatest swordsmen have epic mustaches. <laughs> That's what's holding him back this entire time. The logic yeah, is down. I mean, I'm just waiting for him to say, you know what? Screw swords. Hold three battle axes. Just go twirling around with an Escanor mustache. You know how it is. <laughs> yeah, man. How that's... is that series, by the way? Uh, it's pretty good. I think that the character writing is great. Plot writing is bad. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's true. The, it's all. It's very character driven. Seven Deadly Sins Virgin coming up soon with Mr. Morge. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Is it long? So we had a bunch of other. Right. We had a bunch of really interesting players. There's too many to talk about individually. We had like the descendant of Ors, little Ors Junior. Little Ors Junior, what a beast! Uh, no, he, <laughs> he's a little guy, you know, but you know, he he has heart. He packs a wallop. Thanks to him, they were able to actually actually break through to the platform. So he did a lot for the cause. Respect. Yeah. And also, um, he got his leg sliced off by. Uh, What's it called? By Doflamingo. And we still don't know how Doflamingo did it. He just zipped past him and his leg just went. <laughs> Speaking and... of Doflamingo. Yes! Bruh, bruh. I, I was, I've been waiting to hear your thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Your thoughts on this, man. Doflamingo had a really cool moment. Like, yeah, like you're right. I don't even really know what power he has. And he has a very interesting dress code and all that stuff. But he had a really cool interesting moment. dress code. This man has the best drip in anime. You see that pink shiz spurting from his back? That's how I walk everywhere now. Ever no. since One Piece, I also wear a dead flamingo on me. Everywhere <laughs> I go. I would say that, personally, I prefer Mihawk's swagger, but that's just me. Doflamingo is a... Respectable. Respectable choice. Mm -hmm. But no, when he says, Doflamingo says, 
kids who have never known peace and kids who have never known war have a completely different sense of right and wrong. I related to that very closely because obviously I was born during the Yugoslav civil war. And then I also had, when he continues to say, those at the top will decide what's good and what's evil and justice will prevail either way at Marineford because the victors will decide what justice is. Yes, that one scene, like you have him talking, he's on, I would say on screen, he's like the panels on him and then it zooms out and you see this massive war of giants and men and he just says, whoever prevails is justice. It's such a powerful mentality and it's... Honestly, it's very important for the overall One Piece story, which is focused on this weird world government with that void century bit that we don't know what happened there. And that's the current state of justice. Dude, yeah. you, you easily the best speech in One Piece up till that point. Like, yeah. And I'm glad that like literally everybody who goes through Marine Ford remembers that moment. Like, you know, some, like lots of arcs will have like dialogue that's important or like whatever and like sometimes you remember it sometimes you don't i've never seen somebody get through marine ford without remembering that speech so you know, i think it's still my sorry dr speech. here look you, you just that. got morged i i like dr here speech a lot because it was so emotional and the impact it had on me but i think this is my favorite speech in one piece and like the line where it's like history is written is written by the victor is so true like even yeah. in like our society right yeah and yeah. the thing is a lot of these Marines are just like all about justice, this and justice, that and living <clears throat> under a system of justice. And some of them are sincere. They really like garb. They really want to do the right thing. And others don't give a shit. But at the end of the day, it's completely true what the Flamingo says. Whoever wins determines what justice is. If I'm stronger than you and I can enforce whatever I want on you, I can just call that justice and call it a day. And then we hmm. hard cut to Akainu still well, sitting up there. Uh, as a man of absolute justice. Before we like, yeah. Before we jump into that, like, even no, if you I'm just at saying the, that right yeah. after saying, like, right after that little speech he gave, you had the panel of the three admirals sitting in their chairs. Of, well, two of the admirals were already gone. Aokiji and Kizaru were already on the battlefield, but you still had Akainu sitting there as the man who's gonna write history under his, you know, flavor of justice. Yeah, which I and thought I, was cool. And I was gonna add, like, if you look at the Void Century, like, clearly the world government and the Marines are protecting that history and trying to prevent that history from being shown to the world, right? So, like, obviously there's a lot of theories and we don't know much, but let's say a war happened or, like, whatever. Let's The current system is preventing the public from knowing the previous history as if they're the one writing the future, you know? Yeah. 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 I wonder what Akainu means by absolute justice. Like, we don't know. He was just kind of introduced for the first time for real. Yeah, and so I don't know what exactly that means. I mean, we do kind of get a flavor of Akainu's mindset at, in this arc. I think well, his, just fla his, his flavor is anyone who opposes the Marines is not justice. Anything I say or is like backed by the world government is justice. And that's yeah. what stands. Doesn't matter the situation. Yeah, but that's yeah. he's just Why? the ultimate Why? authoritarianist. Yeah, like exactly. if you look at mm -hmm. if you look at pirates, pirates are just out there doing whatever they want to do. And he says that, you know, maybe you do have some good pirates like Luffy that go ahead and save people and whatever. But you also got a lot of bad pirates. And this willy-nilly freedom, it's not going to stand under the fist of Akainu. Yeah, I think like he says literally to Ace at some point down the line, like this arc, obviously, <laughs> yeah. um, that like people who don't live the right way don't deserve to live or something along those lines. So like that's just his vision of the world. Like everything needs to be in order. He is the ultimate authoritarian as Nux said. So is, is he kind of like Thomas Hobbes? He would say that the worst possible thing is chaos and the collapse of, you know, authority. So even if authority is harsh and authoritarian, it's still better than chaos. So all must be done to protect it. I would say we don't know enough about like the reasoning behind Akainu stuff just yet to at that point in the, at this point in the story to be able to say for sure why he thinks the way he does. Mm -hmm. But like that's very possibly going to be that similar to uh, similar to Blackbeard also. Like we don't know why Blackbeard's doing what, and we'll obviously talk mm -hmm. about him as we proceed. But I think that this clash of ideologies is the most powerful in all of One Piece. The, yeah. This this war pretty much paints One Piece in a completely different light going forward, where you have the ultimate authoritarianist, Akainu, the ultimate anarchist, Blackbeard, and then you have Luffy, who's the middle ground. And it, it's, it's just so beautiful. 
it really is. I love this dichotomy that's in this arc. But anyway, yeah. more on that at the end. Yeah, we'll talk about uh, Blackbeard more, but he had this kind of approach. It's like, I just want to destroy everything, consume everything, just chaos kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah, and that's the exact opposite of a kind. Like, there's even a... Well, we'll talk about it later. Yeah. Yes! Anyway, Briggs, it's your time to shine. Because yeah, so now uh, is when Luffy and the crew drop out of the sky after being taken in by that tsunami, right? Yeah, and um, Luffy lands right next to Whitebeard, and he like he has a full, he has some good height on Whitebeard there. He almost comes up to his ankle. It Bro, was pretty. If crazy. I recall correctly, Croco Boy, Croco yes! Boy tries yes! to attack Whitebeard because that's it like does. they had their whole beef in the past or whatever. And Luffy's ready to go in gear two, already soaked in water, ready to stop him. I'm pretty sure he's complimented by Marco and Kizaru, I believe. Yeah. Um, and he then he kicks the Croco Boy's ass. Oh yeah. He kicks the- uh, Croco Boy like sneaks up behind Whitebeard, try to get a low blow, and Luffy just kicks him in the face. He's like, "All right, get a life." Bro. He's like, "Nah, fam, Ace likes Whitebeard. I'm not letting you touch him." And he's like, "Oh, so this is Whitebeard, huh?" And then Whitebeard's like notices the hat, and like you get a little flashback of Shanks. I feel I feel like I should really let the the Virgin do this, but I love this moment so fucking much. Like, there's there's so many things at play. Adam Mac, do you want to take it away? Yeah. So it was. Noted by everyone there how Luffy was all casual talking as an equal with Whitebeard, and people are like, What is this guy thinking? Like, what is yes, he but- Ivankov and Buggy are just like freaking out. They're like, Wait a second, D- did Luffy just say, Hey, old man, you want to become Pirate King? You're gonna have to go through me. It's like, Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's funny because Luffy is so bold, it's insane, and everyone thinks he's crazy. But that yeah. is exactly why Whitebeard ends up liking and respecting him, and he even tells Marco, Protect this dude. Exactly. And I think because you get to see a little bit of a flashback and he recognizes the hat on Luffy's shoulders and he's like, oh, you know Shanks as well. So he's like, okay, this guy is Ace's brother. He remembers that the wanted poster that Ace showed him was Luffy. He knows he has a connection with Shanks. Then he even like, he try, Viper tries to protect Luffy like, hey, you're still a small fry. You're a little brat. You're a rookie. Get the hell out of here. And Luffy stands his ground. He's like, all right. Let's do this. We both have the same goal. Let's just, just don't get in my way. Luffy does better, though. Luffy says to him, um, if I live to not fight in this war to protect myself, I'd rather be dead. Exactly. Yeah. I, he says that to Ivankov later as well. And he says, I'll do this however the damn well I want. I'm saving Ace by myself. Like, <laughs> yeah. That was a great moment. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm glad that in the end it didn't end up like that where, you know, Luffy gets to, you know, power of friendship and brotherly love and saves him by himself or whatever dude that was so important that's like the most important choice that oda made here because like he could have gone that way but it was so important that he. yeah and i really like the way it is obviously luffy is still overpowered but he wasn't compared to some of these guys he wasn't this like oh unrealistically overpowered guy he definitely had to work with allies and you know in the end things didn't work out the way he wanted them to so i thought that was really good in terms of writing um, just one minor detail, but could be important later. Ivanko considers Kuma to be yeah. an old friend. And yeah. so I was thinking, is there a revolutionary army connection with Kuma? Mm. And if so, if so, why would Kuma decide to become a warlord? And why would he decide to basically donate his body to the world government? Because now apparently even the original Kuma has lost his memories and is just a robot. In the He's words fine. of uh, Do Flamingo, Kuma's already dead. Yes, exactly. So that was intriguing to me. It's like, why would he make this deal with the government? Right. Especially- Kuma's already a character that's shrouded in mystery. And every single time we hear more about him, we're like, bro, what nanny? God damn. Yeah, and especially and- if he was an Ivankov friend who is, you know, fighting against the world government, why would he make this deal with the world government? And being that I'm a bit of a Dofi simp, uh, I would like to point out that everything Doflamingo says, he says through his his philosophical outlook. He, every single line he said, like, he's dead. Well, does life, what does life really mean? Well, he's still sort of alive. He's still sort of there, but he refers to him as dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, Don't Flamingo goes my third favorite character in One Piece, maybe. My, he's my favorite villain in One Piece, easily. Yeah, he's, like, he's my favorite villain as well. Man, I, I love this man so much. And he's also a mysterious character. He's like this evil manipulator type guy just doing his own thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Doflamingo is definitely intriguing. Yeah. Um, so there was another bit of detail. In my translation, the Viz one, Smoker clearly states that it was Dragon who saved Luffy in Logtown. Yeah. Well, he Dragon stops Smoker, Smoker. at one point, right? 
<laughs> in lockdown, so Smoker was bad. chasing Luffy, and Luffy had nothing. He couldn't do anything against the Logia. And then Dragon like put his hand on his shoulder and was like, "Hey, buddy." <laughs> Wait, so is that what he meant? Because I thought he meant that thunderstorm that ended up freeing Luffy from the. I, I think it's still ambiguous. Yeah, I think that I kind of hope that that just remains ambiguous till the end of the series. Because in that way, like it's one of those moments where like you have the option of believing that Dragon helped out, or you can believe that it was fate, and like it just makes it kind of like up to the reader to decide. I would so, very you know, much like prefer fate, it to then, be yeah. fate than it being related to Smoker's. Uh like powers yeah but you mean dragon powers, powers. Like, oh, oh dragon powers my bad too much chance or whatever so like yeah like, like i mean that that's pretty convenient if like god is just shooting lightning at people to protect you yeah i, I, mean, oh, I, that's why I like, like the that ambiguity can, that's yeah, why the ambiguity is though yeah good. that's true yeah um yeah, and then like, we had a very touching moment between best girl and rubber boy which was amazing oh, rubber boy well, a touching moment Hancock. for Boa is just like Luffy's like, thanks, Hancock's like, oh, he called me by my name. <laughs> no, no, he, he gives no, her a hug and he's like, thanks, he you're the best. It. And she just freaks out. She falls on the ground. She's like breathing heavily. And like all the Marines around are like, oh my God, Luffy's so strong. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no. hold on. Hold Boa on really is the MVP though. Like she, oh, went yeah, off, she starts off as a character that you kind of hate. And she's yeah. helped Luffy so much between getting into Impel Down, the key... Um, and a few other things. I, I guess you want to talk about Smoker now, right, uh, Adamac? No, hold on, because are you guys telling me that it's not normal for when you hug a girl for her to act that way? Because every girl I hug acts that way, bro. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, go ahead, Briggs. Oh, then there's this... Boa has these small moments, like protecting... Uh, because, obviously, Smoker is a Logia user. Luffy's getting nowhere while trying to fight him. Like, he just keeps on punching Smoke or whatever. Like, he literally, he, he literally ends up having to run away. And guess who's there to stand, um, to stop Smoker from chasing him? Last time in Logtown, it was Dragon. This time, it's my girl, Boa Hancock, looking a down. A different kind of dragon! A different type of dragon, looking down on Smoker so hard that she's freaking looking up, my dudes. And then she's just she like also, pointing uh, so in she has his so general many moments where she helps Luffy in this arc, but whatever. Yes! No, she just doesn't even pointing come Pointing randomly, insolent swine, get back, I say! You shall not pass! And Smoke is just like, what the hell is that? <laughs> she definitely She's becomes more like be on our side. Oh, but the funny thing is, like, she doesn't become, like, a better person ever. Like, no! people just like her more because, like, she likes Luffy, but she's still the same person who, like, kicks yes! dogs and cats. Because she starts by, like, it's kicking beautiful. a baby seal or something like that. Oh, so and then after going through all of her character stuff, she, like, immediately kicks, like, a baby dog after that immediately. Bruh, and we're like, dare leave a baby dog care. in my queen's path? Pathetic. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't even care now. More, more yeah. <laughs> like, we we like her so much, she can get away with anything. Yeah, so she's lo- she, yeah, we We're just much like the TV. characters in the actual series. Exactly. More, We're just more. like, ah, just let her do it. Yo, big shout more, out to Jen Marie says know, for the 5,000 magical bitches. Thank you so much for the support. Yeah, Welcome speaking back. of badass female characters, thank you, Jen Marie says. There we go. There we go. Uh, Morge, very important point that you may have missed. In our Marine for in our... What's it called? The island, Whammon Island. Empress Island, Whammon Paradise Place. Amazon Lily. Thank you! In Amazon Lily, uh, we went through this very, very scientific analysis of... Uh, I know where this is going. All right, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Character, explaining how she is very similar to Dio from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Have you seen JoJo's Bizarre oh, Adventure? Oh, never mind. I did not know where this was going. Yeah, I've seen JoJo's. Hell yeah. See, Dio is a man. He also kicks dogs and stuff. He, he, he destroys animals all the time. He he kills politicians. Okay. Oh mind. yeah, that was that, a great scene. That was a good scene. He shoved his <laughs> like, finger up his nose so hard it went through his face. Well, Hell how yeah. dare he do that to a senator of the United States, bro? Yeah. <laughs> Which was the repeated respect- over and over in his head. Bubble. He's a senator <laughs> of the United States. Yeah. <laughs> American politicians, the most respected profession out there. But anyway, um, I think it's pretty hilarious that you see we all simp Dio. And we all simp Boa Hancock. There's this crazy Dio energy here. And I think it's very important to stress the fact that if she kicks a dog, how dare the dog be in her way? It's not how dare she kick the dog if it's in front of her. It's a very, very fine line. Okay. Lux, can you stop trying to get Peta to Dio. spam? To like, this well, is criticize Bo, our Dio podcast. Is a villain. With Boa Hancock, she's still a villain, but like everyone's just kind of like wiped that away and been like, yeah, she's one of the good guys. Yeah, she's, she's one, one of, of the, the boys. Guys. It's great. I love her. Nox, stop great. trying to get Peta and like Greenpeace to go after us. Look, okay. ideally, Peta goes after me and I have fun taking them down. Okay? That's the goal. 
as long as Peter, you come at me, bro. As long as you shout out the One Piece Virgin podcast in your video going after PETA. Yo, we should change the expression from kill two birds with one stone to crush two birds with one big ass rock. I think that would be <laughs> Okay, anyway. It's not a boulder. It's a rock. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> That's a reference from Fibonji, Bobby. Okay, go. so talking about going back to the action, there was a moment where Mihawk is trying to go after Luffy, but then the other mustachioed swordsman, what's his name? Vista. Yeah, he comes in and takes over. And me, while Luffy goes to try to rescue Ace, he continues to advance. And Mihawk says that clearly he is still, Mihawk is still technically superior to Luffy, but he understands that Luffy's true strength is the fact that he makes everyone want to help him. So I thought that was cool. Yeah. And then Ivankov even points out later about like the will of D and how like, oh, like it makes sense because we, we get to see him use Conqueror's Hockey um, in this arc and everyone freaks out and we can talk about that. But Ivankov makes a thing, well, that makes so much sense. No wonder everyone continues to follow him and he affects everyone he comes in contact with. You see it in Impal Down, you see it in Marine 4 time and time again. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and just the, the action, like, obviously we can't talk about every single scene in terms of the, the action, but the yeah, action... Yeah, we can. The battles between all these OP characters is just incredible. The art on the panels, the storytelling, everything was just so, so incredible. Hell yeah. Um, and then um, you had Squardo stab Whitebeard. Yeah, that, that was fucked. This is so sad. I thought that was a great scene. I mean... In the end, he obviously regrets it and all that type of stuff. But it is a bit weird that despite the fact that everyone else is so loyal to Whitebeard and loves him so much, this guy was manipulated. It's like, bruh. Yeah, this I, I like I like that actually. It's like you see the underhanded tactics that the Marines would take. Yeah, you see that, that is every, true. Everyone has their own personality and thought process as well. It's like it's not just the commander said this, we all blindly follow. Every, every piece of this puzzle moves to some extent on its own. And with him stabbing Whitebeard, and then Whitebeard just bending down, giving him a hug and saying, but son, I still love you. It's like, oh my god! Yeah, oh so that god. moment does serve two purposes. One is, as you said, to demonstrate how underhanded and Machiavelli and the world government is. And the other is to emphasize what kind of character Whitebeard is. Yeah. 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 So, anywho... Being that that was a thing, uh, then Whitebeard pretty much just waltzed out and was like, okay, everybody. Oh, wait, first we got Luffy, right? Before that even happened with Whitebeard. Luffy just kind of zipped past everyone to save Ace and had a nice clash with Gramps. Yeah, but he failed. So he, he um, for, first he fails to get to Ace, and then he asks Ivankov to give him more of that hormone shot. And Ivankov was like, no, don't Luffy, you could die. Your body can't handle it. But he's like, no, no, I'm here to save Ace. I would never forgive myself if Ace gets executed and I was this close and I didn't do everything I possibly could. So he takes that hormone shot and then he continues his advance. And then Garp pretends like he got punched out by Luffy. But Bro. in reality, Sengoku knew that he let him through. The mindset makes so much sense. Like if you enter this war, you're prepared to die to save Ace, right? So it's like another couple years, another 10 years off your life. Like obviously you're going to do it, right? Yes. Yeah. And also, we can't over like just gloss over the fact like that panel, that beautiful panel of those super tall admirals looking down on the small Luffy with that fucking log in his hand, and he's just by them, right? Yeah, I love that scene Great. where all three of them are looking down at him. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then we he have punches all the ice into him, and like they don't even flinch; his arms crossed. And as all this ha is happening, Whitebeard just keeps taking hits, but keeps fighting on, not backing down. That was incredible. And then we have the moment where as Ace is about to be executed, Luffy uses Conqueror's Hockey from a distance in order to stop his executioners from actually carrying out the execution. And that's when everyone's like, bro, this guy has insane Conqueror's Hockey. And Luffy's like, what? What, he, right. what, do, you guys, what, do, you, what do you guys talk about? <laughs> oh, dude, And he blocked the punch from Sengoku the Buddha. Well, yeah, he kind of blocked it. He, he tanked it. <laughs> but uh, He blocked dude, it with his face! <laughs> did you think going into this like what did you actually predict if like ace was going to survive or not like did you think that they were going to succeed well see this is the thing judging by the way one piece often works out 
it does seem like your know, Luffy always succeeds and he always wins and gets what he wants after you know a long time of fighting and surpassing his limits, etc. Mm-hmm. So it was interesting to see this time Luffy, you know, almost succeeding and and it's almost looking like it's gonna be the way you think it's gonna be. But then we actually had things not work out as well as they they did, and in the end we lost both Ace and Whitebeard, two oh, great I'm, characters. I'm glad yeah. you mentioned that because. When uh, after Luffy saves, well, first he saves Ace, and then they're about to fight Sengoku, and Ace erupts in flames when he gets his handcuffs off, and it's like, ha ha, you came, Luffy, I gotcha. And then you have a few panels that are so triumphant, like the way Oda was writing it. I was when I was reading it this time, I was paying attention, and I was like, dude, this panel, they're they're in the ultimate victory pose, you know? Yeah. It it genuinely looked like. They are doing this. They're finally succeeding. They are accomplishing the impossible. This Marine Ford saga stretched for so long and we're finally coming to a bright conclusion. And as this all happens and Ace is finally free and he's saving people with his fire. He's a player in the battlefield as well. And then Whitebeard brings like it really the melancholy of the series hits again. And Whitebeard's like, all right, go, man. And they're like, what? And he's like, yeah, I, I got this. I got this. And they're like, what? He's like, I'll finish this Marines. And he shatters the whole Marine Ford. And he's like, you run. I'll take on all the Marines single-handedly. Yeah. So this was a big moment. First of all, how funny was it that Mr. 3 randomly shows up to help uh, Hell yeah. Luffy and save well, Ace? Bro, Ace yeah. could never, wouldn't have been able to get those handcuffs off, handcuffs off if, if it wasn't for Mr. 3. Legit MVP moment. Yeah. And Ace obviously can't use his Logia del Fruit without taking out the handcuffs. So that was a very important thing. Yep. And, uh, you know, Mr. Three for me was like, who cares about Mr. Three? But I guess, I guess Bon Clay's example, you know, changed Mr. Three. But yeah, so then we have this crazy moment. Bon Clay is the all might of One Piece. He is. Uh, Then we have this crazy moment where Ace is technically free, but they still obviously are in the middle of Marine Ford and need to get away. So Whitebeard decides to sacrifice himself to let all his pirates escape. In fact, he orders all of them that they must escape, including Ace. And, and, you know, if they don't, they will be defying their captain's orders. But then what happens is Akainu, as manipulative as he is, he provokes, provokes Ace into staying by insulting Whitebeard. And we all know how much Ace loves Whitebeard. And then Akainu attacks Ace. Attacks and Luffy. His, well, first he attacks Ace. And his Magma Logia is stronger than Ace's Fire Logia. And he actually burns Ace. And everyone's like, what, what, how, how his body is fire? How did he get burnt? But yeah, he ends up bur- burning him at first. I really and then after that... Two, I wanted to see those two abilities clash ever since we saw Akainu's was Lava because I was just like, ah, I wonder which one's better. And then like Oda blatantly told us it later. Anyway. Right, yeah. And that's when... I, and then... So they first have that little scrimmage where you see that Magma is actually stronger than Lava. and can. Uh, so Magma is actually stronger than Fire and can actually hurt Ace. And then Akainu again, as the manipulative and Machiavellian guy that he is, goes after Luffy, and Luffy's exhausted and almost passed out at this point, so he's helpless. And that is when Ace has to sacrifice himself by putting his own body between Luffy and Akainu, and he gets crushed by the magma. His, yeah, his entire, like, stomach is destroyed, and Let's he... Let's just say Fire Fist died. had a fist through his chest. It's okay. <sighs> Also, Ace gets a lot of breaks, crap breaks here. too soon, bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ace gets a lot of crap here. But, like, it wasn't just because of the bad mouthing that um, Akainu did. It's also, like, Ace wasn't on board with, hey, like, everyone's sacrificing their lives for me, especially his father figure. He's, like, he kind of wanted to go back to save him as well. Yes. So that's true. Uh, we didn't mention this, but throughout the arc, Ace kept having these moments where he's like, no, I'm the one that made these decisions. I was told not to go after Blackbeard. I did. I made these mistakes. Now all these people are sacrificing their lives for me. I don't want them to. I deserve to pay for my own mistakes. I don't want other people to lose their lives because of my mistakes. He even told Luffy, like, get out of here. Don't come and save me. But obviously Luffy's like, yeah, I'm not going to listen to that, bro. So I definitely understand where Ace is coming from here. And Ace is kind of like Luffy. They're brash. They're stubborn. They're not yeah. the most rational, calculating people. So it makes sense that he would be provoked. How did you feel, my dude? How did this moment make you feel? Bro, all I have to say is this. Gold D Ace. Yes. Gold when it said D that in the manga, I was Ace. like, bro. I didn't remember it said that. But Yeah, yeah oh, that's, that's when I was like, I tears of manliness in my eyes, bro. Mm-hmm. 
But it's funny because Ace wants nothing to do with his father whatsoever. Like he had, he took his mom's name to hide Portcast D Ace, right? To, to hide Gold D Ace. To, to hide the yeah, like to hide the name. But also, like I feel like he like, he wanted nothing. Like his father was Whitebeard, truly. And Whitebeard really throughout this arc, it's like all these guys are calling him, you know, their father, and you see how he earned that title. Oh, he. You really see how did. much he cares about every single one of them, even the ones that backstab him. Yep. Like, yeah, it was crazy because like Whitebeard made mistakes. We didn't even like what like Whitebeard wasn't like a likable character before this arc at all because we only saw him like a couple times. Yeah, we saw like, him for one I second. Yeah. He was badass. He split the sky open. Yeah, I don't agree that though. he wasn't likable like, because kind of he dick. had he was like yeah, kind of old, old. jinx. Right Morge. Morge. Yeah. I disagree with you because as soon as I saw him with all those hot nurses, I was like, I like this dude. <laughs> <laughs> and, Never mind. And you can ask them. You Same can ask them. It's proof. It's proof in this podcast. It's, it's what true. I said. It's true. But in um, this one arc, he went from a uh, pretty badass character, I guess, to one of the most legend. legendary anime characters of all time. Yeah. Dude, yeah. the way he went out, I mean, you haven't talked about that. Well, then um, Blackbeard shows up. Wait, 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 wait. Before After, we get into that, no, before we get no, into no, no. that. We're I not at Blackbeard yet. I just want to say, I just want to say, like, Ace dying wasn't super impactful for me, but you know what was, what made it impactful? was Luffy with that absolutely devastated face on his knees right in front. Like, you get this panel where, like, Luffy's on his knees. Just like above him, you see Ace with a fucking fist through his chest. Um, a fire fist, a magma fist, and then you got a Kainu above them. And it's just like... And then you have a, a panel of just Luffy's face and how absolutely destroyed he is. And then when they hug each other, he's like, like can you hear me? And they have this little conversation. It wasn't like... The actual impact of Ace dying didn't like impact me that much it was seeing luffy's reaction and realizing all the efforts they went through the fact that this is luffy's brother and how destroyed he's going to be you know this this was luffy luffy's first irreparable defeat and it was insane like how much went into it because like and like i want to talk about this in like a future marine ford video but like i've never seen in a shonen like a character go through like the protagonist literally do that like you know i gave 110 percent for like 50 straight chat or like 80 straight chapters or whatever like in pursuit of one goal and like everything is riding on it like i have to save this guy no matter what like literally everything is riding on it this is a bigger deal than anything before bigger than robin bigger than vv all of that stuff and like you know how they keep calling impel down hell like luffy literally went to hell and back and like bet decades of his lifespan all on this and he still just couldn't do it. And he still I failed. I've never seen anything like that before. Yeah, I mean, I think that's really important because yeah. he went through all of these things to try to save Ace. Entire arcs were focused on this. And in now, the end, I'm he I'm always the type failed. of guy. I'm the type of guy that always tries to look at the good, never point out the bad. As a very wholesome individual that's never been toxic before, just want to point out that Deku from My Hero Academia didn't lose a single fight to a villain in the entire story. <laughs> Really? <laughs> nope. He didn't lose a single fight to a villain in the whole My Hero Academia story. Wow. And people wonder why, like, Luffy's not... Yeah, he only lost to Bakugo and... He to lost to Bakugo yeah. when they, you know, sparred at night one night and they got detention for it, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think in the tournament he lost, but, yeah, not to a villain. Yeah, and he could have won. He just gave it up for his opponent's mental state. That it wasn't and, a villain. Uh, just, I forgot to say... Uh, Jen Marie says gave us another five thousand magical crystals. Thank you so much. And yeah, Raphael yeah. Pie gave us a thousand fifty. Yeah, so it's absolutely. This was definitely heartbreaking to me. Like Ace, we don't know him that well, right? Like he, he. If you look at how much screen time he actually had, it wasn't that much. But the way it's presented in this arc, with his backstory, with all this stuff, with how Ace felt like this outlaw, this outcast, nobody, nobody wanted him because he was the son of the devil, and everyone hated him, and he's like. At the end, he's like, "Thank you for loving me." Like to his, to his crew, to Luffy, to all of these people, and like they did all of this just to save him, even though he was this person that, in his own mind, he shouldn't have even been born. It would have been better if he wasn't born. At least at times, he felt that way. It was really, really powerful. Yeah. Then yeah. Blackbeard rolls in. No, I'm kidding. Then Blackbeard we got, we got, rolls in. No, no. Wait, before Blackbeard rolls Not in. The Briggs! <laughs> Isn't the Whitebeard's bet death? No. No. Okay, continue. First, Blackbeard no, but rolls we, in. Then no, we no. get a flashback. Then. Oh, okay, first, before all that, we glossed over the fact that Boy Hancock 
<laughs> I'm kidding. But she also did take out the pacifist to save Luffy. Another great moment of hers. All right. Agreed. Yeah. Look, there were so many great moments. There was Diamond. J just the scene of Mihawk <laughs> slashing Buggy and Buggy dodging it by, you know, put, cutting himself in half with his devil fruit power. And they're all like, oh my God, Buggy's going toe to toe with the greatest swordsman in the world. It's like all these scenes, they were just so good. But like, ah. <laughs> We also oh. had the we also before Blackbeard shows up we had the fight between um, Akainu and Whitebeard. Oh, uh, yeah, White yeah, yeah. Whitebeard defeats Akainu although he is severely injured. He is like half his face is almost blown off, but he's still standing, still fighting. And then Blackbeard and his pirates show up after Whitebeard uses his devil fruit powers to separate the pirates from the marines in order to let the pirates escape. He separates the ground, and then Blackbeard's like, "So boys." I didn't really want to be a warlord. I only did it for my plan. My whole point was just to release all these powerful legendary criminals from Impel Down, make them part of my crew, and now turn on all of you. Chaos, let it go. Let Chaos it rain. incarnate. And he and his whole crew of ragtag, terrible prisoners attack Whitebeard simultaneously. And then it also explains, this part explains how, why the um, Gates of Justice opened for Buggy and, and everyone else when the because they may they were hypnotized the impel down guards were hypnotized by one of Blackbeard's crewmates to open the doors whenever a battleship showed up so it made that that make, made sense why it actually yeah. opened for them and um then after they all like attack him and they're all stabbing him and stuff now uh, first of all he pummeled the crap out of Blackbeard too like this this man beat up an, an entire two armies in front of him before you know eventually yeah yeah but, so it, Blackbeard is only defeated, I can't say taken down, I, I have to say defeated by all white uh, Blackbeard and all, his entire crew attacking at the same time. After fighting off the entire world government's marine force. Yes. And uh, then, like, after he's attacked by everyone, you get this flashback where he's, like, where he's drinking with Roger. And he's like, my name's Gold D. Roger. And uh, Whitebeard's like, oh, my God, I ran into guys with D in their name. I even have one D guy on my crew. His name is Marshall D. Teach. Yes. Which is Blackbeard. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, it zones back right into the present when finally it looks like Whitebeard is having a crushing defeat. And Whitebeard sets off one of the most amazing thing, <laughs> chain reactions in history. And he just bellows, the One Piece is real. Yeah. And the whole world shook it from what he just said. Yeah, so it was a huge moment because, first of all, Whitebeard had this whole thing where people were like, when he was young, people were like, how come you don't want treasure and all this stuff? And then he was kind of like, my treasure is family. Like, what he wanted was a family and that's what his and you see that from the actions he's taken as well like um yeah so he he found his treasure even though he dies at this point he has found his treasure and lived and he reignited the great pirate era like you have sengoku's like no and blackbeard's laughing and buggy's accidentally broadcasting it to the world and uh then you have the narrator <clears throat> Even after he died, with his face half gone, his body would not yield. No, don't Cutting use that translation. Enemy. Don't use that translation, please. Yeah. That hurts. Okay, so freaking send me the other one. This is a good translation. Even in death, his body okay. did not fall. His right, figure taking down enemies while losing half of his head was truly monstrous. The total number of sword wounds he received in this battle was 267. He was shot by 152 bullets and was hit by 46 cannonballs. And despite all this, his proud back over the course of his entire life as a pirate never received a single scar from running away. Dude, that's one of my favorite quotes in like, the series. Like, the ending part with his back literally always made me tear up when I would go back and read it. And then like when I watched it in the anime too. By the way, Ace's death or Whitebeard's death? Which one's better? Whitebeard's. Well, Whitebeard's, yeah. I got Whitebeard too. <laughs> like, Whitebeard. That one scene where, uh, where while the narrator's saying that and you see the sun shining like through his, like over his shoulder, like, and you can't oh, see his face. Shot. That, shot. that shot while um, the narrator's just pretty much saying Whitebeard's the greatest man you will ever lay eyes on, period. And, um, like, that scene is so powerful. Especially because I think a lot of people before reading this knew Ace was going to die. Because Ace's death is one of the biggest spoilers ever. But 
I don't think anyone realized necessarily that Whitebeard was going to die. And when it happened, it really hit hard. Well, the thing is about Whitebeard, he is, from a narrative perspective, it is in suggestion that he's way past his prime. He has these medical issues. That's often like a hint that something's yeah. going to happen to this person in stories. But yeah, still, the way it happened is just absolutely amazing. Yeah, because like very often you're gonna have those like older gen characters. They're gonna die off to you know to have like some dramatic impact and stuff like that. And I think Oda was leading up to it, you know, with Whitebeard yeah. saying, you yeah, know, he was leading up to it and stuff. So we could kind of see that as very likely. But the way Oda did it, where first he had Ace die, which was the big shocker and made us really bummed out, and then he also still had Whitebeard die. That made it like hit harder than if just Whitebeard had died. Like it kind of doubled up yep. the impact of his death. And can, yeah, I, can I just say I, this man I, died standing, and then obviously, like you have the scene where his like his um whatever his coat thing blows off, and he has no wounds. But can I just say this man died standing? He's still only the second biggest Chad in the series. Yeah, <laughs> can't spoil the first yet, but you'll get there, Animac. This man, you know, I, I, this monster I know of a Bon man. Clay. I know Bon Clay is the number one. Wow. <laughs> No, I don't Bob, know, Bob man. I still think I thought that no one would beat Whitebeard's Chadliness in the story, and then, and then, did. Uh, mi- then Mr. Morge totally underestimated a certain character in Wano. What could I say? Okay, but <laughs> but uh, some other important reveals that we had. We had this whole thing about the will of D being a will that is inherited from one person to another for centuries. That was yeah. like a oh, that's sort of super important line he says here to yeah. to Blackbeard himself too, because he he kind of puts down Blackbeard. Yeah, because he says someone will inherit Ace as well, but he he doesn't think that Blackbeard is someone worthy of the will of D. And uh, and then he has the whole the One Piece does exist, and it will turn the world upside down, and suggesting that the government is desperate to keep the One Piece from being discovered. And this just makes me wonder even more: what is the One Piece? And it has to be the missing piece, the one missing piece that will tie everything together with the Void Century and bring down the legitimacy of the world government. It has to be. Hell yeah! It's either one of the ancient weapons that will be able to take down the, the world government, or it is um, information that will be able to take down the world government. Yeah, it's Whatever yeah. it is, it's definitely interesting. And um, Blackbeard... Whew, he, right when you think you reached a climax of this arc, every single time, it's like... I mean, I know we didn't even mention that when Ace died, um, everyone was holding Garp back. Garp said, I'm going to go kill Sengoku. I, See, I'm going to go had, kill Akainu. You know? Like, Garp, had, like, like, because it's low key because, you know, so much other stuff's going on. But, like, Garp had, like, quite the character. Yeah. Like, little arc over the course of this yeah. arc. Bro, Poor Garp, Garp, Garp fucks. I feel really bad for Garp, but he fucks up Marco at one point, too. And, like, you think this is some old hilarious. man. But the only reason he yeah. didn't become a. Actually, fuck, I don't know if I could say that. Yeah, but he's uh, a vice admiral. I, he's a vice admiral. He's a he's strong a boy. He's a vice admiral. Strong boy. No, but the, mm-hmm. the problem with Wheaties. him... The problem with him is that, yeah, he's conflicted because he's a Marine and he believes that, you know, they have to preserve order. He doesn't like pirates. But on the other hand, it's, you know, his grandsons are there fighting on the other side. I would have liked to see him just switch sides, but I know that's not that easy. But he almost... Um, he practically... Did, like, the, I thought the way they did Garp was so good because it yeah. was like... I wish All he could have him. killed Akainu, man. That would have been amazing. Fuck yeah, him. and he might have. He might. We don't know. Fuck That's Akainu what in his stupid do. ass. Like we had, he had his duty overriding his emotion for like ninety five percent of the time. But then in the moments that really came down to it, like when Luffy was facing him on the platform, or like right when Ace actually died, and like those moments where it was just really raw and real in front of him, and he's seeing what's happening with his grandson. Like in those moments, his emotion overtook him. So like he did switch sides in the moments that mattered. But, like, overall, he knew what he was supposed to be doing. So I thought the way that they did Garp was just, like, super yeah. relatable or, like, real. So for Akainu, is ab- the idea of absolute justice, does it mean that absolute power is justice? Again, it's still, it's still unclear. It doesn't seem that way. It seems like he his head is screwed on, I guess. He's not stupid. And uh, he doesn't seem like the type of person that's fighting purely selfishly because he wants power. He seems like he's the type of person fighting in his ideology, yeah. which is what makes him scarier in some ways. Yeah, I, I like the concept of absolute justice, like those two words together. It's like, I just wonder what that means. Right. Yeah, I feel like he doesn't think that absolute power is absolute justice because, bruh, Whitebeard bodied 
Okay, <laughs> a- after Ace died, we didn't mention this, but yeah, Whitebeard bodied I- I- Alkanu. Dude, like, I don't know how this man still lived between getting absolutely slammed to the ground and like compressed into nothing. Then he throws him up and slams him again and he falls into like in between the cracks and this impact literally makes like all the floor go uneven. Bro, I don't know how that guy's still alive, genuinely. Who's yeah, your totally. favorite Afro after all this? <laughs> Aokiji. Yeah, he's the only one I don't hate, so. <laughs> I like his voice a lot. <laughs> like, that is interesting. Like, he's entertaining. Like, I like Doflamingo for the same reason. I like Crocodile for the same reason. I like uh, Doflamingo a lot, but I don't consider... Oh, he- there's so much that happened in this arc! Oh, my God! There was Doflamingo fighting Crocodile, too! Oh, yeah. We also God, have man. not talked about Kobe at all. Yeah, oh, Kobe. I don't really care about Kobe, guys. Bro, Sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> For, hold can on, we hold talk on. about? Wait a second. About, no, wait, you wait a Kobe second. Kobe was can late. Talk... Kobe didn't show up yet. No, Kobe's yeah, done a lot I mean, of stuff. He was there. He was kind of there. Dude, he, he was not hearing... there yet. Not yeah. his good moment. Okay, but Luffy. Yeah, but had to fight was... Kobe. Luffy. Uh, Kobe started hearing voices. He didn't voices, fight and then Kobe. He walked past Kobe and punched him in the face, and Kobe was like, "Ah, my glasses." I can't see without my glasses. Okay, mind. I hate you. I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with Nux on this one. Doesn't happen often, but bro, we have to talk about the fact that after Whitebeard dies standing on his feet, like the Chad that he is, Blackbeard somehow manages to steal his devil fruit. Yo, I was gonna mention that um, the way this arc was going, we got our ace climax, and we were like, "Bro, crazy!" Then you got the white beard climax that he actually died, and it's like, "Okay, we, we've reached this crazy climax of this arc, and time for everyone to part ways." This is crazy, and then Blackbeard comes out swinging. This is my age, boys. Yes. He throws this black thing over white beard, pops out. Goes in Whitebeard stance, and everyone's like, "Bro, what is he doing? Is he gonna start dancing ballet or something?" And then he shatters the planet, and they're like, "God damn it, dude!" God the chapter, yeah. I think it's really called like major events, like one after another. Like he yeah, knows what crazy. he's doing. He knows that he's already dropped like three bombs on us in a row, but he's just not gonna stop. And he doesn't stop. And then Blackbeard. Th- this is when all the pieces of the puzzle click. This is when. Wait a second, Blackbeard. Got this darkness fruit power, ran away, got Ace to chase him, gave in Ace so Luffy could break into him impel down. So he could get his crew out so that Whitebeard could come here so that he could actually kill Whitebeard because himself he had absolutely no chance to kill Whitebeard. So he could steal his fruit. It was the biggest brain move ever. Yeah, Dude, it was all it, part of his plan. It's, like, but it's the, not even like the plan worked out just right in the end. But, like, he even admits that it was, like, kind of a rough plan. Like, the, if it works out right, then he gets everything. Like, it's, like, a high risk, high reward. But he nearly got fucked up, like, five times on the way to pulling it off. Like, yeah. this wasn't, like, Aizen he, where, like, everything he, goes perfectly and smoothly all the way no, across No, because the we know that this Helmepo... got his butt kicked by every player in the game. Helmepo like, is the Aizen of, of one place, like, guys. Literally one-shotted by, like, uh, like... As a casual offhand, like, okay, I need to get past you and just get to Luffy and stuff like that. <laughs> Yo, Ace slaps him. He, he gets slapped around by Ace a little bit before he, he wins. A little bit slapped around by... Dude, yeah, Whitebeard so nearly... Have... Luffy slapped okay, okay, him. Okay, hold on. Okay. Magellan slapped him. Whitebeard okay. slapped him. Guys, so I'm really wondering now, how was he able to steal a second Devil Fruit? Because that was even mentioned in the story. No one is able to have more than one Devil Fruit. And then we had, like, a hint about, oh, yeah, Blackbeard has a weird body. Yep. But that's all we know. So, like, what does that mean? He has a weird body. Well, I still love that. I guess you'll find out. Beard. There's a lot of cool theories, and um, there's a lot of people who theorize about his body, about his devil fruit. And uh, yeah, we just got to keep on watching, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, it, but it's just... definitely terrifying. It's terrifying that this dude overnight became one of the strongest forces on the planet. He became yeah. a world power overnight. Yeah, and he's such an unpredictable, like, chaotic figure. So, like, what is he going to do with this? Power, and know? that's why my this arc prediction, is also cool. My prediction is that in the next arc, you just see Blackbeard walk up to Helmepo big, and say, Helmepo, yeah. I'm giving you both devil fruits. <laughs> <laughs> you ruined my joke, you stupid loser. <laughs> I, I, was gonna, I, was I was going to do the whole thing where like <laughs> there's this dark figure in shadow, you can't <laughs> see his face. Blackbeard bows and like out of the shadow steps out Helmepo, the true Aizen of the 
of the series, but you're, you ruined it, Nox. You're welcome. That's like you I ruin do. everything. That's what I do. Hell I D drag. Meppo. Hell D Meppo, yeah. Yeah. And um, look, at this point in the story, it's just it's just hell out there. You got Law shows up out of yeah, nowhere. We haven't even, we even mentioned that Trafalgar Law shows up in a submarine of all things yeah. and saves Luffy from Akainu and Kizaru who were trying to hunt him down. And Luffy's like unconscious at this point. He's like completely helpless. And destroyed. It destroyed physically and mentally. Like he's yes. not in a good place. And Law's just like, guys, I'm a doctor. <laughs> just pile him in. All right, sure thing. Jinbei fights uh, Akainu. Dude. Hey, Jinbei's the beast. I wouldn't call it a fight. Yo, it was a fair fight. Jinbei saved Luffy, you know? <laughs> Big time, Jinbei yeah. Did, yeah. yeah. And so did yeah, Marco. Jinbei says that at first Ace asked him back in Impel Down, it's like, can you protect my brother? And he's like, I'm not going to protect just anyone. I have to like actually like and respect him in order to decide to protect him. But then after seeing Luffy and meeting him, he decides that, yes, I will protect this dude. Yo, I love Jinbei so much. Oh, my God. He is know, great. He, he's I like, I was already prepared to die like, Yo, as soon carrot. as I came here. I, do, I don't care. Jinbei. I know. Uh, Jinbei's all right. That's because you have bad taste. No offense. <laughs> yeah, that, that's exactly. What I, was. I was like, damn, um, I wish I didn't have such bad taste so I could like Jinbei. No, yes. I, like, I like Jinbei a lot. He's just not top five straw hats. What can I say? I find it interesting Whoa. though that. Shut up, Briggs. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> uh, I find it interesting though that Law <laughs> decided to save Luffy because they're technically rivals, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. I mean, they're sort of rivals. This whole worst generation thing, it's like, they're just the big up-and-comers. You don't really know how they view each other. They're all different also. Shout out to Hooky Wookie for the Magic Crystals and subs. Appreciate it. Shout out to Hooky um, And then, of course, you got... Now you get your Kobe moment. Briggs. Oh, Kobe. Oh, yes. So, yeah, Kobe shows up. He, um... He tries to stop Luffy because, you know, that's his job. He wants to be a Not Marine. Luffy. Luffy's chasing his Akainu. dream. No, 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 no. We're starting with every Kobe moment because Kobe's an no, important character. No, no. Like, and then, ah, guys, dude. shut the fuck up. And then that's the Luffy. podcast, guys. Thank you for joining us. See you again next week. <laughs> I'm kidding, but kind of not kidding. Okay, Luffy punch out Kobe. Then later on, he starts hearing voices. Oh no, what could that be? Then at the end of the war, what's it called? Um, Kobe comes in and he has this awesome speech. Would you like to take it away, Animac? This is the one you want to talk about, the only one that yeah, matters. Yeah, so... It's the only Kobe, one Kobe moment that matters. <laughs> Kobe is about to be killed by Akainu for attempting to end the bloodshed. He's trying to be like, guys, the battle's over. You know, Ace is dead. Whitebeard is dead. The pirates are retreating. We need to stop this now. Marine Ford is pretty much destroyed. So many people have died. All these people have families. There's no need to continue this war. It's over. And Akainu is just like, okay, give me one second, guys. I'm just going to get this... Uh, Get this guy out of my way real quick. But we have our boy Shanks showing up randomly out of nowhere, one of the Yonkos, and he arrives to stop the war. I mean, a bit late, bro, but he arrives to stop the war and he saves Kobe from a kind right. of... You, you may want to roast Shanks and say a bit late, bro, and with that line, you immediately ended our friendship. But I just wanted to say that you have to realize in the beginning of Marine Ford, there were a bunch of Marines saying like, Oh my God! I did you hear that another one of the Yonko Kaido is actually coming to Marine Four too? And the other Marine said to him, "Nah, man, Kaido's not coming. He got stopped by Shanks." Yes. So we did have a mention about Shanks just being fight, having fought Kaido recently, and yet he's here again. Out of Dude, nowhere. do you realize <laughs> that Kaido, another Emperor, we don't know anything about him. Maybe he sucks. I don't know. But uh, Kaido was going to join this battle. He was going to throw his hat in the ring. He got stopped by Shanks. And now Shanks, he's here to stop everything else. Bro. Bro. Shanks, th there were all the big players of the world were here. And this man walks onto the field. This dude, no arm, no devil fruit. He just stares down every world power. And it just says, guys, it's over. I'm here to end the war. And immediately they all just scuttle away. Kizaru was like, oh, no, that's Ben Beckman. My hands are up. You're holding off. Kizaru can move it, like, <laughs> super fast. Whatever. I'm not going to get into how fast he can move. And then this guy holds a fucking rifle to him. And he's like, oh, shit, I got to stop. Shanks stops Magma Brath with a sword. And he's like, all right, we're ending the war. Nice words, Kobe, because he has respect for Kobe and the, the, the move and speech he made there, like, risking his entire life to speak for what he thinks is right. They accomplished their goal. 
They killed Whitebeard. They killed Ace. It's over. People are dying. Let's save the wounded, right? Um, and yeah, Shanks comes in. It's like, let's stop. And they're like, oh, shit, let's, let's stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah but done for the day. I think so it, was, a good it, was a, it was a cool thing because Shanks got to see what Luffy had done and, you know, everything that's going on. Although they didn't have a reunion because Luffy's like passed out. But what does ending the war now accomplish, man? Like, eventually they're going to have to take down the world government, bro, because these people are not good people. What, what do you mean, what does ending the war accomplish right now? The world government still had a lot of their key players. Uh, yeah, they were Blackbeard was here. We still had the remnants of the Whitebeard pirates. It, this was going to kill out everyone, man. Uh, like, like, if the admirals, the, if the three admirals die and a bunch of Shichibukai die, which is very likely with Shanks showing up, Right, like, or people, more people end up dying. Like, what's gonna happen? The world's gonna be thrown into chaos. Sometimes if Shanks yeah. doesn't like join this, winning let's, would have say been the, let's say the worst outcome. Yeah. Let's say the Blackbeard pirates just keep fighting, and they're fighting the the Marines and the Whitebeard pirates. And it's very likely at this point that they all wipe each other out. At this point, you have no world government force to can to make any form of balance between these other Yonko that are just gonna completely take over. If, if he can't leave the world in such crazy disarray and he just single-handedly ended everything i don't know if i was shanks i would have let blackbeard and the government fight each other for a bit and then just step in and blackbeard might have just Dude, but it's hard run to say, away like then what's the best outcome because like in that case like shanks is the only good guy kind of left then there's still like the two other yonko that are probably gonna fuck sh up, Bro, too. but no he's got what, Luffy, he's got other... Buggy D Clown. Oh, like... that's true. He's got Buggy. <laughs> Yo, Buggy cop talking so casually to Shanks. I love it. And everyone's freaking out. Like, oh my god, he's talking to a Yonko. <laughs> it just keeps adding on. Overall no, thoughts on the arc. The Shanks, the Shanks entrance is actually fire. I think that um, yeah. get, getting to see the weight that all these different pieces of the of the chessboard hold like every single major player was pretty much brought up in this arc. You got well, Black Blackbeard is the anti Luffy in this arc. Also he's basically, you know, how Luffy dreams to become the pirate King or whatever. You got Blackbeard's weird twisted ideology of becoming the pirate King and Blackbeard actually succeeds. It's like, it's nuts. Yeah. yeah so I think like this is the perfect, like halfway point for a story that you could ask for pretty much like having the villain, kind of like leapfrog his way towards the protagonist's dream like blackbeard did move up like 50 spots in the world hierarchy like just from the marine fort and fell down arc he went from like someone he was barely known he became a warlord whatever status that is and he immediately jumped up to become one of the world powers yeah yeah at this point it seems like warlord's not even an impressive status anymore yeah no, it's kind of gone down it's it's kind of gone down Look, like, the yeah, at first it was like a the warlords deal, are but... cool because it's uh, it's these these weird individuals that get to do kind of whatever they want that are at the beck and call of the government. And I feel like a lot of the uh, yeah, warlords like, so... in this like because people will like, always give Mihawk crap for like he's the strongest swordsman in the world. Why didn't he do anything during this war? You got to realize these guys like they kind of want the role as warlords like they could do whatever they want. But they they're still pirates and they don't want to really work for the world government. So they show up and like like Boa didn't want to come. They show up, they help, but they don't go all out. No, no, Mihawk was just that he was like, I'm just here, so I'm not going to get fined. That yeah. was his mentality, basically. Exactly, yeah. So, I mean, at first, the Warlords are just these uh, incredible, overpowered people, but then now we have the Yonkos, we have, you know, all these other crazy people like Whitebeard and Shank it's, yeah. and uh, the Admirals. So it doesn't seem that the Warlords are that big a deal, especially freaking, what's his name? Moria. Yeah, I mean, you got Moria really like ruining the world. Yo, we there. got a sick Moria moment. God damn Did it! Did we? We got Do Flamingo taking down Moria and saying, "You don't deserve to stand beside me." That's that's not a sick sick Moria moment. That's like <laughs> Moria at his lowest. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you don't understand. Me watching people get destroyed is a sick moment. Okay. Mo Mo all Moria could think about. Oh man, I want to get this other ores to be my zombie too. <laughs> He's like, I'm sure I can get... You know how crazy it was that Moria thought he could become Pirate King if he just got Orz as, like, his follower? Dude, like, this, man fought Ka Jr. this man was like, ah, oh, damn it, Kaido just barely defeated me that one time. <laughs> if only I had Orz, then I'd be fine. It's like Orz Jr. got messed up in, like, 30 seconds by, like, two warlords giving their bare minimum effort. Like, what was Moria's long-term plan here? 
I, I don't know. I think he's just unreal. He's delusional. He's just completely yeah, exactly. delusional. He thinks that if he has his puppets, he could do anything. And then uh, he got slapped, pimp slapped very hard by Do Flamingo, who once again just, you know, jizzes his ideology all over the battlefield. And Do Flamingo does look like a pimp, so it makes perfect sense. Yes. No, but so all the all the overall arc impressions to me, this is the perfect arc. This is 10 out of 10, 100%. I would say probably definitely the best arc so far. My only regret is not having the rest of the crew here because yeah, I, I love mean, them. But yeah. it's still an amazing arc, and I still think it's it's number one. I what did like, you I have like before this? Read this my number rankings one. just keep on changing. Before this is number one, I, I think probably the, the whole uh, Water 7 uh, saga. Yeah, that's the, like it's people are usually either the Water Seven and East Lobby is their favorite, or Marine Ford is their favorite. At least at this point in the series, and it's yeah, like they're yeah. so opposite because like Water Seven and East Lobby was the ultimate triumph and like the ultimate like the crew is together, they took on the world and won, and then this is like the complete reverse where they're like, all right, Luffy was by himself and he just got the shit over and over and over and over and over and over. Yeah, and over so, and over. so you're right. So the Water Seven and this lobby arc has the, the strength of developing the characters, the crew, because they're all working together and we get Robin's backstory and we meet Frankie. So it's great for that, for the development of the Straw Hats. But then this only has Luffy and yet it's so good too because we meet all these other great characters and there's so many overpowered battles that are just insane and so much world building. The, the only thing that I felt was missing here was the fact that the only major player that was missing here was of course dragon the revolutionary army right so yeah. i was wondering why wouldn't someone like dragon take advantage of this war to score points against the government that was my only uh outstanding question i mean and like questions get somewhat answered as time goes on so yeah yeah because like if i was dragon and i'm seeing that the government is in, embroiled in this like massive war against whitebeard I would, you know, attack them from behind or attack them in another location and, and score points. Yeah. Well, you'll learn more about the revolutionaries and who they are, but not that much. <laughs> um, yeah. Revolutionaries are my top five straw heads, right, Briggs? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bro, I fucked up. I fucked up. <laughs> what? I said top no, five. Nothing, calm. nothing <laughs> Animac. We're all good. Okay. Any, anyhow... Man. Yeah, I don't know. There, there's probably a ton more to say, but I just don't know if we're gonna be able to say it all. Well, we covered. I think we covered like close. We to covered everything. a lot. We definitely covered a lot. And of course, there were amazing moments that we're not gonna be able to talk about because I don't want this to be an 18-hour long um, episode. Not that I'd be that opposed, but you know, got stuff to do and stuff. Well, free, oh, feel free amazing. to let us know what we forgot, and maybe we'll mention it briefly in the next episode, which is the post Marine Ford arc. Glad you mentioned that, Briggs, because that is going to be chapters 581 to 597. Hell yeah, looking forward to it. And also, thank you to Hooky Wookie for the 10 subs and 1,000 bits, and UB for the 10 subs. Appreciate the support, boys. Thank you, guys. And yeah, so this was, like I said, the perfect arc. So much hype, so many goosebumps. And from a writer perspective, I, I loved, we mentioned this, but I love the fact that, yeah, it didn't all end up the way we thought it would. It wasn't all just power of friendship or power of brotherhood yeah, it was the opposite of power of friendship because... yeah exactly it was like no they tried and they went through all this stuff and in the end it didn't go the way they planned and in, in fact the end, it didn't it, even matter yeah in fact you could say that this arc was blackbeard's arc like it was it his really was blackbeard's arc shown in protagonist moment if he was a shown protagonist dude just think about the story until this point i mean it doesn't compare to anything else. I don't. This this shouldn't be the overhyping One Piece podcast. But being that One Piece is in fact superior to almost everything else, I think it's okay. What do you think, Briggs? I think it's. I agree, hundred um, percent. I can't believe Animac <laughs> would say that uh, Marine Force a four to ten. I was clearly. so disappointed when he messaged me, dude. How am I going to do this episode of the podcast? Marine Ford's only a three out of ten. Bro, there is no name a greater Shonen arc than Marine Ford. You can't. I don't think there is. You I don't can't. think you can do it. This arc is a prime example why my rating scale for all anime goes zero to One Piece. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because like not every arc in One Piece is perfection, but this one definitely is. Like, how do you, you know, what arc in in like and even you know, you guys love Chimera Antark. I think it's good, but not 
the best. I love York New, but again, it's not a 10 out of 10, and this is a 10 out of 10 for me. Damn. Were you worried, by the way, that you weren't going to like One Piece that much going into this whole project? No, I didn't because I feel like my brother, who also runs the anime for channel with me, he loves it, and he was telling me, bro, this is really good. And I, so everyone told me it's good, so I was like, it's very unlikely that I wouldn't like One Piece. Yeah. Well, I know last week we were just praising the crap out of uh, Marineford, and one of the reasons why we like Impel Down so much is because it's a great setup to Marineford. And you kept saying, I don't know, man, don't overhype Marineford for me. Did we overhype Marineford? No, but that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm always afraid that you're going to overhype shit for me, and then I'm, I won't be as That's impressed. right. Live in terror, Animac. Pathetic. But, but definitely Marine Ford is just, it doesn't get any better, man. It doesn't yeah. get any better. Did you think you'd like One Piece this much? Probably not, because, yeah, like, that's the thing. Nox and Briggs are such simps Nox for and Briggs! One Piece. They're, they're such simps for One Piece. They want to talk about it all the time. To Nox the and Briggs. the point that they annoyed me. Like, I was annoyed about One Piece because they're always bringing it up. So, like, yo, let's fucking get this over with. Let's get into One Piece. But I definitely do think that One Piece is not overrated because it is amazing. And it's all yes. downhill from here. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, don't joke about that. <laughs> Dude, man, if Wano doesn't freaking kick some ass, if we don't get a Marine Ford level defeat right now, I will be so upset. <laughs> Dude, I, honestly, I watched your video, so I know that you're like basically of the same mentality but like I, I really hope that something like that happens that would be funny if wano being the current arc right right yeah that would be funny if uh that arc ends and oda's like like guys we're officially at the halfway point of what <laughs> <laughs> like he said by marine for <laughs> Oh, that would be good. I, I think well, it'll be. I, I just hope that all the scabbards like attack Kaido or something, and he just kills all of them. It's, yeah, they're all just yeah. die by touching him. He has like a force field or something. <laughs> they just all die. <laughs> Although I will say, after this point, a lot of the arcs start getting longer and longer, especially. Um, well, the sagas do. Yeah, um, what was I gonna say? And it just—it's because at this point, Oda did say this is like kind of the halfway point of the story. It didn't end up being true because he legit every arc has to get. All this information it has to develop the world and everything that's going on, and I feel like he underestimated like how much time he would need to do that. Well, it and might it might still do, be man. the halfway point in One Piece. You never know if like within the next ten chapters, Doctor Vegapunk comes up with nuclear weapons and ever, all life on planet Earth is destroyed, and then we have this quick finale with Enel finding the One Piece. That's what I want to see. Yes, yes. Anywho, it was great. A lot of fun. Thanks for watching, everyone. Subscribe to everybody, including Mr. Morge. Check out all of Animax plugs. He linked them everywhere. Uh, have yourselves the most wonderful evening. Stay weird, fam. Thank you guys for joining us. And until next time, see us, Space Cowboys. Spread the word about the podcast. Bang. <laughs>